Hey there, Audra here. I absolutely love looking at before and after photos, particularly of occupied homes, because so much of the magic starts in a home when this home stager just walks in the door. And if you're thinking about becoming a stager and you think, oh, I, I don't know if I wanna invest a bunch of inventory and furniture and a warehouse, you absolutely don't have to. Now, one of the things I walk people through in my training is building very slowly and also dipping your toe in different ways of staging. Not all homes need vacant staging. In fact, this is an occupied stage where Melissa Ice used everything the client had. So one thing I love about occupied staging is you're in, out, doesn't require you to invest in inventory, that sort of thing, or heavy stuff. And you can work your magic just using what they have suggesting shopping suggestions that really dial in a space. And you'll see when we look at these before and after photos and that's it. And so, so many of my stagers have that very simplified business model. It's a zero overhead business model, which is actually very cool. So there's just, again, so many different directions you can take this business. That's why I like to share these different success stories so that you can see and make a great decision for yourself. So this is a occupied, staging by Melissa Ice. This is the before photo. Not bad, right? Just a very large room. And here we are. Here is the after photo. And you can see she rearranged the furniture. She kept the rug. She kept really all of it. Um, she redid the mantle. We'll get some close-ups here. And you know, some new pillows. She styled the coffee table and the tabletops. Really, a lot of it is in the details, in the styling details, from the mantle to the coffee table to just even the way the pillows work. And it's okay, again, I always say, if you're selling your house, however you live, that is absolutely fine. It's, or no, however you live normally is fine, but when you wanna put your product up for sale, this is when you want a professional to come in who can actually use what you have, redo what you have. And by the way, this could have just as easily been a redesign. So I always teach people both staging and redesign because a lot of people don't want to invest in a bunch of new furniture or new window coverings or expensive things. They think interior designers are too expensive. Well, what stagers do is we can actually redesign and redo the space so that you just love where you live. So I always say start there. Start with the stager redesigner so they can say, this probably needs to go this is classic and it can stay. And that's what stagers do in their staging homes. That's what we do when we redesign. Here's a lovely close up when we talk about the art of arranging. I have a bunch of design modules in my training and we talk about that high, medium, low and scaling it to the furniture that it's next to. So it's not too small of a centerpiece style, not too big. And she did this just beautifully using what they had, you can see, and just some key greenery that's really hot right now. We talked about what's trending. Greenery always trends. Here's another close-up of the way she styled the coffee table. And it makes for beautiful photos. So you can see this living room. Here's the living room again before. And one thing I always say, this, if nothing else, stators are so good at editing and clearing out kind of wall coverings because most of us do not know how to hang art correctly. And I have a tutorial about that. You can look it up in my blog if you need help with it. It's really, really simple. <laughs> and it's so simple that people miss it. Classic example, all this art, this gallery wall that they tried to create is hung too high. And it's also not really to scale with the wall or the, or the space. And it just appears hodgepodge instead of gallery. Gallery walls are tricky. <laughs> so you could see what she did. She just cleared it out. Uh, and she added just one big art here. She added some symmetry. Symmetry uh, brings peace and serenity to a space. Symmetry is when you kind of duplicate. So the same lamps on either side makes a symmetrical vignette and and people like to see that in the space so when buyers walk in a lot of times if the art's hung too high or too low or there's no symmetry buyers they can't necessarily identify what's wrong with the space they just know it feels off so that's why i like to show these before and afters so the, the art the stagers when they go through my training we explain these things these are design principles from scale to proportion to symmetry to rhythm uh, and 
when it feels off, people recognize it. They just don't know how to fix it. And that's what we know how to do. So here is the kitchen before, and it is a galley kitchen. I did another uh, success story where it was a design success story where Sherry just blazed, basically blew out the wall to get rid of the galley kitchen. But you can see she just completely edited redid the centerpiece and it looks a lot cleaner and obviously that's just you know stage to sell here's one of the vignette details that she set up in the kitchen that you couldn't really see close up it was really cute with the tulips in the background and also in the kitchen on the far wall which you didn't see this was a little nook in the wall that was just filled with stuff so she just edited and styled it using again what they had and now it looks just very crisp and clean and it's also kind of welcome to our home for staging. Now I'm walking in the entryway of this home and to the left is this formal dining room. And she again just used what they had, made the most. This is a real budget occupied staging. Used what they had and just edited the space. It just looks a whole lot better. And sometimes as stagers we set the table and sometimes we don't. And every stager has their own aesthetic with that. And there's ne not necessarily a right or wrong way. I always say set the table to the luxury level of the home. Uh, don't set it if it's not a luxury level home. To the right, when you walked in the entryway, there was this kind of office hodgepodge space. And she just had them edit that as well. And again, they put it in her big report. She walks through gives them the staging report, tells them all the things that they need to do, which these sellers eagerly did. And they were so smart to listen to her. And that's why we're getting these tremendous results is when the sellers actually listen and they follow the report to a T. And you can tell these sellers really cared about the way they live. This is a beautiful home. It just needed a little bit of um, updating and styling. And this is the before photo of the entryway that Melissa Ice did. And here is the after photo. Again, I think she just edited it beautifully. Here's the thing. Most of us have a tendency. We just can't look objectively at our home anymore. And it doesn't matter how great of a designer you are. I actually bring, you know, everybody knows my first business was with my sister. She still has kind of that business in Santa Cruz, big time stage or designer. I bring her in to be objective about my space and she can hardly be that way anymore because she's been to my house so many times. But that's the beauty of bringing in an expert in your space. Sellers, it's okay. It's like someone's asking you to be objective about your children and we can't do that, right? So we have to, stagers can come in and they can be objective. They can impart their expertise. And as long as the sellers follow it, here's the before photo of the master bedroom. And you can see that chest is just like, boom, it's just too much. It's just kind of just too big. It's too much of the photos. Here's another before photo of the bedroom. And again, you really see that massive chest. And it's probably lovely. It's probably an heirloom. Definitely something that matters and is emotional to someone to keep. But in a staged home, we clear it out. So here's the staging after that she did. And we'll get to some of the details. But you can see she used their bedding. She used their pillows. This was a very low budget occupied staging, just using what they had. This is on top of the dresser, the edit that she did there. I love it. Actually, I think that lamp is a Studio McGee Target lamp. So good. Love Studio McGee. If you don't know what that is, look them up on Target. That's where a lot of it's tell my stagers to get. Here I love she styled another dresser. Again, the high, medium, low, in threes typically or odds. Oh, here was the before of the dresser. I should have showed you that after the before. So that's what it looked like before. And she kind of, you know, restyled. And staging is all in the details. That's what buyers notice. So again, there was that before. And after. Look how beautiful that is. And I love how she styled this. Of course, round mirrors can't go wrong. And hopefully you enjoyed this. Occupied staging, zero budget. The sellers literally just had to put in that elbow grease, follow the report that Melissa Ice gave them, and then she came in to do some last minute edits before the professional photographer. And now this is a listing that's selling quickly. I wish I could give you the real results because I know they were huge when she mentioned it in our private Facebook group. Um, so exciting. If you're a stager or if you're thinking about getting into staging, Check out my certification. You will love it. This is how Melissa 
all these experts got started and now they're doing kind of the job of their dreams. And it's so much fun, rewarding, seeing the changes in a space in real time, helping the sellers make the most money on their most valuable product. It really can't get any better than that. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you, Melissa, and I'll see you in the next video.